Todd Slugger of his early days when the height used to be deafening. He's learned a lot of tricks of the trade and he's a very battle-hardened and experienced and thinking pro as well now. Good right hand out from Nardiello, clubbing right. Nardiello walking to his corner as the bell goes to end the round. Nardiello complaining that he's slipping on the canvas in his boots. Welcome back live to the London Arena. Nigel Benn defending his WBC Super Middleweight Championship against the Italian Vincenzo Nardiello. Now they've got some sawdust there and they're rubbing the soles of Nardiello's boots into it to try and get him a bit of a grip. He was um, complaining bitterly to Larry O'Connell, the referee, at the end of that first round. without the right hand through the middle then. He is, he, or, he was also running with the jab, which against the southpaw usually takes a little bit of time before you get your jab on, but already Ben has landed with the jab in the right hand, so you feel that he's, he's already getting his range. sellout here at the London Arena. There's Nassim Hamed and Frank Bruno and Frank Warren is the meat in the sandwich. Frank Bruno bidding for a World Heavyweight Championship soon. Big mate of Nigel Benz and Ben is telling me that he'd like to train him someday. He's got other business on his mind at the moment. Third round. Nardiello, the Italian Southport. And Ben hasn't really got to him yet. Well, he's come close with that right hand, you see him shoot it out there, but he just hasn't managed to put a flurry of punches together yet because he's very unorthodox now, the yellow. Frederick Sellier, who is not noted as a puncher, stopped Nardiello in five rounds in a European title fight last year, though they say Nardiello wasn't really in shape for that. You can bet your bottom dollar he will be in shape for this. Southpaw right hand. Nardiello him 
himself. Not um, a concussive puncher, but can be a hurtful one. Yes, and he looks quite physically strong. He's trying to, to push Ben back. really shook Ben up in the last round when he came over here in the, the rematch. I've seen Ben badly hurt in fights and come back to win. This is very tough, very determined. And the thing with Ben, he can hurt you with either hand. so far Nigel Ben Glenn I think he, he's having a little bit of trouble with the, the, the orthodox unorthodox stance of Nardiello and that's giving him a little bit of trouble because Nardiello is looking to get close to him looking to hold and he's a little bit tight at the moment but I think as Nardiello gets a little bit more tired that will relax him and then Ben will start to his work will become better and he'll start to loosen up to this job as he's finding these awkward spoiling tactics of Nardiello a bit of a frustration so far Nardiello takes that and counters himself gives a grimace more than a smile three rounds gone well there's plenty of sportsmanship between the two of them but it's a tough battle for Nigel Ben as he tries to establish control here over this Italian. Just two defeats, one against Michael Watson way back in 1989, the other in that epic with Chris Eubank in 1990. Kevin Sanders doing the talking in the corner. A little bit of work there where Ben's getting through that right over because he's just starting to get through, starting to, to force a little bit. He just landed with a few good shots in that round, Ben. And you see the right hand that really rocked his head back. You see Nardiello just after this, he looks to grab. Fourth round. Glenn's got it so far. Two rounds to Ben, one even. And we were trying to get up there with some fast jabs, but we all fell short. But he is pretty fired up, and he is letting his own straight punches go. But all too often he wants to come into the ref. Doing that really from the word go. Again, complaining that Ben was rabbit punching him, hitting him in the back of the head. He did then too. Of course, we saw him in the, in the corner just at the interval just before there. He was shouting back at his corner, and they were shouting at him, and he was shouting back at Nardiello. So he's really psyched up for this one. It looks to me as if Nardiello has decided to try to spoil his way to victory. Good right hand counter from the Italian, mind you. A little warning to Ben that he can't charge in recklessly. This Mundial is very, he's quite effective, very unorthodox, but quite effective. Mundiello was good enough to represent his country at the Olympic Games as an amateur. Roy Jones. Decent right hand from Ben, but Nardiello is making a pretty decent argument of this, Ben. Yes, he is giving Ben some trouble with that left hand. He's picking away with, with his southpaw right, and then, he, then just walking on to the left hand a little bit. It's a very sharp punch from Nardiello. Eight years since he has 
sport of southpaw then of course he was sparring with running away where that in Tenerife but he doesn't do a great amount of sparring doesn't believe in having gym wars because he has enough of them in the ring <laughs> that's exactly right a lot of fighters do far too much in the gym and we'll leave it there Jane, a decent jab from Nardiello as well Tactics of them and really just got to keep at his game plan. It's going to be hard at first because he's so naughty enough. But just keep at it, and I think eventually he'll start chinking the armor of Nardiello. He's finding it hard at the moment to catch him cleanly, mind you. Welcome back to the London Arena down in Docklands in the east of London. Nigel Ben back in action and this man Vincenzo Nardiello grabbing an awkward customer so far they're still working away at the soles of his boots to try to give them some more grip well the bell's gone for the start of the round the Italian corner aren't out of the ring they're not drunk to buy a bit of time get off of it says referee Larry O'Connor and oh Nardiello gets through with some good looking punches at the start of the round a volley of about 10 as he's got them going here Ben takes those and comes back himself and he gets to the right hand he claims he was fucking Nardiello Nardiello feels he was fucking he goes down there's no count so presumably Larry O'Connell agreed with him there was no count but he did land he did hit them with some good shots and very fast punches and Ben did come out that good right hand to some more edge of action, let's see. Nardiello making a great start for this fifth round. He's definitely growing in confidence, the Italian. There are signs here that this might be a much tougher defence for Nigel Ben than a lot of people thought. Because it certainly isn't an easy fight. I think that the style of Nardiello is jumping up and down and moving around that circle jab, which is giving Ben problems. They did clash heads. There's certainly nothing intentional, but they did clash heads on the way in. 
Spence trying to yeah, trying to get his punches off and he did my heads. But this is a good start from Nardi Elloway who really comes out full of fire and gets lots of punches off. You see Ben trying to crouch low and avoid them, but Nardi Elloway got through with enough to win the round, I feel. This is the sixth round. A lot of fairly good judges thought Nardi Elloway might not last this far.
slipping again. Again, no count. That's the third time he's been down without a count. West Ham right each time. Back comes Harley Yellow, though. And I think Ben felt the weight of that one. He's just sacked from him, and now he wants to hold on. Could be the breakthrough round for him though. Mariello has been able to continue those frustrating tactics, frustrating as far as Ben is concerned anyway. No better middle left two penalty. Down for a second time he's hurt his hand as well now. So he's giving out all kinds of distress signals. The left hand. There's no three knockdown. Well that's another knockdown. He's down two times now. If there'd been a three knockdown rule here, the fight would have been automatically over now. So that's worked in Nardiello's favour. But he's in trouble here. There's no doubt about it. Yes, Ben's got Ben's him getting good to him punch. now. He's landing with good punches there, Ian. I think his temperament, he's shown definite signs of distress here. Ben looks on the verge of victory at this point. Seventh round. Mariello has been down three times in round seven. And another time when he slipped. Bends round in a big, big way. And Mariello now. Well, the gesticulations count for very little. You should hope by the actions of Mariello that Ben is certainly getting him now. He's getting sick, he's getting frustrated. He doesn't know what to do. Well, here's the first knockdown coming up now. It's a straight right. Bang. It's a delayed action ball. He just... It was, yeah. I think there was a couple of times he showed distress there where he was obviously hurt, but he, he thought it for, for a second and then thought it was best to go down. You see it there. gets caught with that right hand and goes down. So he's in all sorts of trouble and Ben has got to keep the pressure on now Ian. Eighth round. Ben I'm sure will feel now that he's got things back under control. Because it looked, it's starting to look a bit dodgy for him, I must say, at the halfway point. Nardiello looked as if he was capable of maybe just nicking the title away. Yes, certainly he was giving Ben lots of problems. A very orthodox style, fast southpaw jab, a sharp little right cross. But I think Ben's just starting to fathom it out, just starting to land with his, his good shots. Coming right, getting through again. Mariello complaining that one of them is behind the head. Larry O'Connell wants to hear nothing of that. This will be a mandatory eight count. Now he's saying the boots are slipping. I don't think he wants to know too much more here, Nardiello, really. No, I think he's, he's looking for every excuse in the boogie. He's giving out every kind of distress signal, and that's only going to encourage Ben. He can read the signs all right. This is round eight. Nardiello down for the fourth time in the space of, what, two and a half minutes or so. exactly what Ben wanted. Now he's got him on the, the back foot. Now he's trying to land with people punches. Oh, well, right up the cut this time. Now the yellow stuff. What is he saying? Now the towel. They're trying to throw the towel in. And they've, they've retired him. The corner of the time, now the yellow. He's not arguing about it either. And Nigel Ben is still the WBC super middleweight champion. Now, he's saying, come on, give this Italian fair dues. But really, Nardiello quit. Now he's trying to claim it was all because he couldn't stand on his feet properly with the boots. Forget all that. There are just so many excuses in the end. Ben's power was too much for him. And that is the long and short of it. Nardiello did very, very well for six rounds. And looked as if he was capable, maybe, of stealing it if he could have kept on with those tactics. But in the end, once Ben had got through to him, you just knew what was going to happen, didn't you? That's, a, that's exactly what Ben had to do. He said it was hard for him in the early rounds. He, a 
very nervous after the corner. Ben just couldn't get to him probably and getting caught on the way in. But then Ben just kept the tactics going, just wore him down gradually. And then it was more the, the spirit of Nardiello that went. And he just didn't want to know any complaint of, of everything, of buttoning, of slipping and of everything. But it was really, it was just Ben's constant pressure and hurtful punches, what did the job. Well, I'll give this man credit. We all wondered how he might react to what happened five months ago in the Gerald McClellan fight. But he gets the job done again. And you really do have to regard this though as right up there among the very best of British world champions, certainly in the modern era. It's his 41st win and his 34th inside the distance. And that's the, how it all finished. The good right hand and the right of a cut. But you could tell after the first one that Nardiello didn't want to know. You see there he's he's complaining about something, but he went down of his own accord. It okay. certainly wasn't a slip. Okay, I'm going to try and you carry on talking, then I'm going to try and get a word now with Nigel Penn once he gets out of the ring. So there it is again, you see the right power is snapped to his punches. Damiani just keeps pushing and he almost put down that time. Nails him with another right hand, he looks like he's ready to go almost. Damiani catches him with the left, nails him with the right hand. Showing a little bit of aggressiveness, trying to follow up here. And Francesco Damiani having things pretty much his way here at round number two. Break! The fat! The fat! Of course, you've got something up here with it. Leaves with the right hand, follows up with the left hook. Don't come down, eh? Dorsey Gamer with those long, gangly arms has not been doing much of a job of tying Damiani up thus far. Right hand lead, follows with the uppercut. A little bit off balance to throw that right hand that time was Damiani. Scores with the left hand, follows up with the right. And Lenny's some pretty good shots in here, although now Dorsey Gaiman ties him up. We see the time remaining in round number two. And again, this is scheduled for 10 rounds. Damiani did a nice job that time, slipping an uppercut and then following up with an uppercut of his own. Don't forget Damiani was the 1984 Olympic silver medalist. He beat Teofilo Stevenson in Cuba.